Jaron Cannonier, doing no media. What do you guys think of that? Now, I'm getting that from you. I have not seen him do any media, but he's done so little media, which may quite literally mean zero. He's done such little media that there's now articles coming out on the fact that Cannonier is doing no media. What do you make of that? And every time I talk about an athlete and the importance to media, I get responses to some degree that will say that I am encouraging somebody to talk trash or that I'm comparing them to a WWE athlete. Like I hear that said about me. Chael wants you to be a WWE athlete, though I never said the words. Chael thinks you need to talk trash, but I don't think I've ever said those words. Like, literally, I don't think I've ever said talk trash. I don't like it. I resist it. I had it said about me, and I pushed back on it. I do not like trash talking. I would always call myself a truth talker. If you ask me something, I'm going to answer you truly, unlike the other guys of the sport who think it's honorable and sportsmanlike to say one thing to your face and put a knife in your back. I will tell you to your face that when you turn around, I'm going to put a knife in your back, and then I will. I mean, But I remember saying these things. And I always had pushback when somebody would say, Chael thinks everybody should be a WWE. I have the foggiest idea where that comes from. Chael thinks people should talk trash. I have the foggiest idea where that comes from. I have people on this program all the time. If they come on to talk trash, I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. Why talk trash? Why not just talk about the match? If along the way, you have some issue with your opponent, particularly if it's organic and real, you cross paths with him and you didn't find him to be a nice guy, by all means, tell me the story. But when I encourage to do media, it's just to tell a story, and a story has five W's, who, what, when, why, and where. That's it. Go out and tell your who, what, when, why, and where. Get us interested. Let me know why this is important to you, whether it's this specific contest, the outcome, the placement, the lifelong journey, the dedication to your coach, a promise that you made. I want to hear about it. And I don't need you to be a character from the WWE. And I don't need you to say anything bad about your opponent. And I would like to clear that up. Because if Jared Cannonier is, in fact, doing no media, there is two sides to that. That's not a good idea. If you're in promotion, promotion just means storytelling. And storytelling has the five W's. Who, what, when, why, and where. That's where I always combine all of these. I can go back, though. I can go back, what would this would be about 2003, 2004, when this statement was still true. But if you could get to the UFC for the duration of your MMA career, you were made. You were going to be fine. There would always be something for you to do, somebody to compete with, and money to be had. You could be released from the UFC. Never had to do anything spectacular. You would go on to the indie circuit and they would put you on posters and it would say your name and then it would say UFC vet. And if you were a veteran of the UFC, you were going to sell a bunch of tickets and you were going to be a main event. You were going to be the highest paid guy on the card, even if that's down at the local dog park where they're doing these events. It's a true story. Today, there's a lot more. UFCs. Back when that statement was true, there was six shows a year. In 2006, they moved to 11 shows a year. They then went to 20-some shows a year, and here we are at, we got fighting every weekend. But I share that with you because if you get into a main event, you should be a made man. The duration of your career, career should be spoken for the night that you fight for a championship in the headlining role. And that doesn't mean that you have to win. I get all the obvious if you do win. What I'm here to explain to you is what's unobvious if you don't win. You are a former number one contender. You are at the top of the bill. Now, you might have some sliding to do. But if you don't have a second and third and fourth opponent lined up, you've missed an opportunity. If all your eggs go into the basket of grabbing the championship and therefore what's next is going to be set, It will be a title fight because you're the one bringing it. It will be at the top of the bill because you're the champion of the world. If you put all your eggs in that basket, you have greatly underserved yourself. Now, Cannoneer is not known for this. I don't suggest for you that Jaron Cannoneer, in the most important moment of his athletic life, go and do something that he's not familiar with. I don't suggest that. 
if he likes to keep to himself and he likes to keep his nose down and this is just the way he's done it and that's what took him such a long and hard path to the championship but here we are i don't begrudge that i will tell you guys the jared cannonier story is really good he was in alaska and was like i might have some of it wrong but you gotta search this stuff he's like a truck driver in alaska he's fighting at heavyweight he works his way down and most guys don't do better as they lose weight we've seen guys that start off small and work their way into the big guy and all of a sudden they're kicking everybody's ass and i know in theory if you can do good at 200 pounds you're going to do better at 190 which means you should be 175 i get that in theory but jared cannonier is one of the guys that actually did it where the smaller he got the better he did and he works his way down to 185 and his days of driving truck in Alaska and his days of having a dream, they're actually here. It's a fantastic story. And this is a fantastic moment that he earned. I will just share with you the byproduct of being quiet and not doing the media. If Jared Cannonier is to win, we all can tell that story, guys. You don't need a salesman to move a Ferrari. The guys that are good and have skills will sell you the Volvo. So the question isn't what happens if Jared beats Izzy, it's the other side of the coin, of which there's a 50% chance it's going to happen. Where does he go from there? And everybody gets asked that question. Everybody gets asked it the night of. Very few guys ever have an answer. The smart ones will know exactly where they're going to go. They're going to know what the path back is like. They're going to know what the big fights are going to be. They're going to know the placement. They're going to understand what the card is. They're going to know who within their division is coming up against who within their division. They're going to know the venue that's taking place. They're going to know the date that that's happening. They'll be ready. It's a very honorable spot that Jared's in, that he has earned. I do not uh, tell you he should adopt a character. I do not tell you that he should talk trash. I'm telling you right now, he's not doing media. And that comes with a double-edged sword. So many people think they're the smart guy in the room because they know the matchups to do if somebody has success. That's not the smart guy. That's obvious to everyone. The smart guy planned for the other side. He planned for the worst outcome. And I will just share with you, much like the time when if you were a UFC vet, you were a made man right here today, which is very different time, 2022, if you make it to a main event in a world title fight, you should be a made man. You should have three big, guaranteed three big fights out there with beautiful placements, with a whole bunch of money coming, and the outcome doesn't matter if you did it right. And if you didn't, none of us look down on you. If you burn your boats and you put all your eggs in one basket because plan A is, because plan B is plan A. Plan C is plan A. There's an honor to that. No doubt, but there's a risk. And if you want to be good in the world of promotion, you must understand that it's storytelling. To tell a story, you got five W's, you got to tell it to anybody that asks. Great marketing is not refusing to put yourself out there. Great marketing is going and finding and creating those opportunities and making the most of it.